Let's introduce our guest host, and this is Dr. Willie Mutunga, former Chief Justice, first President of the Supreme Court of Kenya, founder of the Kenya Human Rights Commission, very many other accolades, you know. Uh, Karibu to the studio. Thanks. And welcome to the Situation Room. Now you're here. Mm. Previously, we've spoken to you when you're there. Mm. This is uh, this is the hot seat, but because you're our guest host, mm. uh, it's just moderately warm. <laughs> <laughs> moderately warm. What do you make of that proverb? When townspeople are happy, mm. look for the chief. Mm. I've never heard of it. It sounds very religious. Hmm. Yeah. It's actually a Liberian proverb. It's, Liberian. it's a Liberian proverb. Mm. It's a Liberian proverb. Yeah, because uh, religion basically is is about uh, the that happen abstract happiness. Mm -hmm. You know, they tell us about uh, a land of milk and honey, and we need not worry about Tomorrow. happiness here. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's so so so. My take was, you know what. What, what are the struggles around that mm. vision of happiness? Mm. Because there are very many narratives, mm. religious ones, uh, others that are, you know, uh, uh, material. Mm -hmm. A lot of the systems in this world talk about happiness, mm -hmm. whether it's capitalism, whether it's socialism. It's, it's, it's you know, that seems to be the, uh, the, an issue of, of challenge, which is, I think, is, is always a good thing to have a planet where uh, people have a focus on on some particular ideal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and happiness is a great thing. It is, and it yeah. seems to be the one thing that human beings are always seeking, seeking and pursuing. Mm -hmm. Yes. And oddly enough, never quite getting it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Maybe why we don't get it becomes mm. very, very, very important. Mm. Too. Mm interrogate yes what is it that uh, makes happiness so elusive yes mm. you know why why is the world so uh, why is the world not equal mm. why is it that there are some people have uh, happiness for them is a given mm -hmm. and the others struggle mm. you know uh, to get why, why is it that the resources are not equitably distributed? Why is it that some people sleep hungry, others? Those are all ingredients of uh, uh, happiness. Mm. Because if, if you are sick, you can't be happy. No. And uh, if there is no universal health care, you know, all these issues. So, so, so I think this, uh, th that proverb is really profound once you, once you interrogate it and mm. uh, problematize it here. Yeah. We get into it. Yeah, Willie, mm. um, you are you are past seventy. You know, I've got to remember that you actually retired from the judiciary because you had attained that age. That was sixty-nine. Uh, now look at you, man. <laughs> because, this is because I don't have any public service viruses. So. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Public man. service is very uh, stressful. Right. Mm. He pursued so. happiness. Mm. Yeah, right. <laughs> this was it. He pursued, <laughs> he pursued happiness. happiness. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the journey to get where you are, mm. uh, Willie, you, you've done many things um, in pursuit of not only your own happiness, but in happiness of others as well. You know, from the days when you got into civil society agitating for... Uh, changing the constitution, believing that there could be better ideals in governance and how things are done in the country. Even I believe when you applied to be the first chief justice under the current constitution, mm. it's because you believe that there's something that can be done better. There's a better way of doing things. Mm. If you look back at the Willy Mutunga of the 80s in the university, mm. uh, the 70s, mm. right, as a lecturer. Yeah. And the country, as it has progressed so far, how would you rate us? Have we moved closer to your ideals, or are we still stuck to what you were looking at when you were in Dar es Salaam studying law and you were thinking, this country of mine? Have we? Mm. Have we yeah, well, that's a great question. But my answer is uh, that 
you know, we've made uh, progress. Because I think in this country, people don't really look at the small gains that are made. Uh, people don't look at, um, uh, we don't glorify, glorify resistance. Because there's always some resistance that is, that is happening. In the 70s in the university, it was academic freedom. Mm -hmm. Where the university uh, basically uh, resisted Moy's idea of what should be taught and you know, the books that should be in the library and in the bookshop. Uh, and, and, and that's the heart of our university. So, mm. you know, we, you know we, we resisted. And when you look at that trajectory of resistance, whether it's the seven bearded sisters, you know, in Kano government, whether it's uh, the university, whether it's the Mwakenya, you know, mm. underground, mm. Uh, whether it's the, the second liberation. That is progress. Because we were still, when you look at that trajectory, uh, it was a struggle against dictatorship, particularly the Kanu Moi or Kanu Jomo dictatorships. And, 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 and I think that's, that's something that we have not, we've not looked at. Uh, that Kenyans are always organizing, always resisting something that they don't, they don't like. Mm -hmm. and, and that narrative is, is always dominated by this other uh, very vicious narrative of uh, politics of division. You know, where, you know, you, uh, you, you have five communities that control the over 70% of the vote. Mm -hmm. And if, since uh, 1950, uh, 1963, they have continued to basically uh, tell us <laughs> that leaders will come from, you know, mm. you know those five communities. Yeah, you know, recently the president uh, said very cleverly, oh, I think it's high time, you know, we have a president from another community. And so... You know, uh, Kenyans are debating that which one is it? Yeah. Is it the Kamba one? Is it the Luya one? Is it the Luo one? But it's one of the five. <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of the five, um, and and that is very very uh, you know pro problematic because uh, politics of division uh, once established uh, become really a disease. Hmm. You know the the the, the, the fact that. Uh, every community seeks for a king. Okay. Y you know, mm -hmm. um, that's what the Kambas call Kalonga Musioka. Musumbi. Musumbi means a king. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Mudama doesn't get to be called king? No. Not, not yet? No. Because you see, among my community, I think that crown is always up in the air. <laughs> 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 it's not like the other three, the three dominant ones, the Kikuyus and Kalenjins and the, the Luos. Mm. There is some stability there when the barons are, are very, very powerful with mm. their with their narratives, mm -hmm. you know. But I think the Luyas and the Kambas, uh, even historically, have been in all all over the place. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so, so the one the, that crown in Ukambani, you know, it's uh, it's always uh, shifted. Even Gay didn't hold it tightly. Mm. Mulu Mutisa did not. You know, Kalonzo hasn't, uh, because there are other people now uh, who are actually vying, you know, for it. Mm -hmm. But I always say that <coughs> it's very, very, very dangerous to un underestimate the politics of division and the people behind it. Mm. Uh, a lot of intellectuals tend to uh, basically underestimate uh, the, uh, the intelligence, the genius of uh, politics or division and, and uh, also uh, deviation. You know, how you start with uh, a handshake you go to bbi and after bbi you go so we are engaged constantly mm -hmm. you know with the stuff that uh it's not useful mm -hmm. for this country and yet it, it captures you know uh 
our imagination. Mm. And so for me, I normally focus on what makes a prophet a war have that kind of follow following. Mm. Mm -hmm. Where he goes to Nakuru and people are washing the streets for him. Mm. Mm. For heaven's sake, Jesus did not even get that kind of attention. Mm -hmm. It's only Mary Magdalene who washed his uh, feet with mm -hmm. some perfume. But mm -hmm. this guy, uh, and and it's you 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 just have to, uh, uh, particular for alternative political leaderships, they have to know how they crack that. Mm -hmm. And I don't think abuses uh, that you find with a lot of intellectuals, you know, they don't crack it. Yeah. You can't uh, abuse the individual, you know, without taking into account the followers, because the followers become very, very angry. Mm. In fact, you, could one argue that they come even more angry than the person who's actually being abused? Actually <laughs> That's right. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes. The person who is abused, you know, will not do anything. But you, you attack, you know, Baba directly, you know. <laughs> Uh, Baba will keep quiet, but yeah, yeah. But you, you, you. People need to focus on uh, his politics mm. and convince the followers <laughs> that he hasn't done anything for them. Mm. You know, nothing. And uh, the politics of issues in this country haven't uh, really captured the imagination of people. I think Corona virus has given us a chance. Mm. Uh, it's a, a very great opening. If 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 Raila was still in the opposition, he would have taken it up, you know, in a big way. Yeah, you know, he'd have capitalized on it. Yeah, yeah, because he's he's, he's a brilliant mo mobilizer and organizer. Mm. There's no doubt about that. Mm. You, you know, I've I've worked with him. I've seen him in action. So he is is just like his father. He's very 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 good in that sp space. <laughs> but when the opposition joins the government then you have uh, a dictatorship would you say that that is um, mm -hmm. the terrain that is probably new mm -hmm. to Raila because I wouldn't say it's new because it happened in the Moi era yeah but would you say that what you're referring to as joining the government mm -hmm. is it's like a change of narrative from what people associate with someone like Raila Odinga yeah, you know, I have always thought that I would meet Raila and ask him, you know, uh, what is he's doing in government. Mm. Because I, I always, <laughs> there's some, some, you know, I always think that he has a plan. He doesn't get into, you know, alliances. With, without a plan. <laughs> without a plan. <laughs> and I don't know what that, uh, you know, you know, plan is. Uh, but... It's, it's obviously uh, a different terrain for him, for him, and uh, I don't, uh, y y you know, of course a lot of his uh, followers are very angry when we, uh, when we attack him. But not angry, yeah. furious. They are furious, but what they don't understand is that we operating from a position where we think we have lost that you know that we have lost a leader i mean mm. the opposition in any country is important mm. Mm. <laughs> and if there is a vacuum if there is a vacuum but it's no it? stability and uh, i i think i i once wrote about that vacuum and about uh, handshakes historically from mm. you know 63 mm. mm. yes and uh, Raila's uh, Dennis Onyango he said oh if if um, uh, the there is a vacuum in the opposition. You go and occupy it. He was just rude mm. <laughs> because because I, I, I don't have the capacity to go and replace Raila. Mm. It's not that easy. Mm. It's, 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 it's something that even the young people can create. Uh, we'll have to develop over you know over a period time. of time. Wait, there's a question that comes yeah. to mind when yeah. you say mm. that people may not see that he has not given them anything. Mm. Maybe the question I would ask is, yeah. what do you think they think they have been given? Because clearly, people don't follow blindly. The, the reason why they follow. So according to them, there's something they're getting. Yes, there's something they're getting. And what is it? And it doesn't just apply to, <laughs> yes, Raila Odinga. Mm. It applies to any leader. All leaders. Ask yourself, in this country, uh, mm. 
when people coalesce against, let's talk about the top leaders, whether it is Mudavadi, whether it is Kalonzo, whether it is Ruto. What is it that they feel that because there's something they're getting? By being in those positions. Yes, and I'm not talking about money. What are they getting? Hope. It's just like, uh, um, what do people get from church? What do people get from which doctors? Hope. Hope, inspiration. Yes, hope. It's important, you know, in, you know inspiration. Uh, somebody like uh, Raila's trajectory of fighting against oppression. Mm. That, that history is important. Mm. Mm. You know, that uh, people see that history, you know, the, uh, the imprisonment, you know. Mm. And that's why the trajectory of a politician is something that you have to, you, you can't pick it in bits and pieces. No, you have to look at the whole trajectory. You have to look at the whole trajectory. And you, you see, a lot of people are probably frozen in that you know, very courageous, very, very, very uh, uh, struggle mm. that that he was engaged in. You know, there are mm. people. You know, people who are there, mm. and uh, it's it's it's. I can relate to that. I I can tell you that uh, one of the things I I remember about uh, Jaramogi Odinga Odinga uh, during the height of Moi's uh dictatorship you know very 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 serious dictatorship uh, uh jaramogi was the only person who could actually challenge moi mm. directly directly mm. because they detained him they mm. put him in house arrest and the house arrest is still yeah. mm. okay so i remember when the university was under attack and we all running we we're waiting to be detained and so forth mm. Jeremog somewhere in uh, uh, Bondo, in his shrill voice, he said, Moi! <laughs> 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 and he said, Moi, you don't have a title deed to this country. Uh -huh. <laughs> and where we were, you know, we were actually encouraged. It's like a resurrection, mm. you know, of some hope that mm. what you are mm. talking about. Mm. And uh, Somebody like Raila has given a lot of people hope in that way. Mm. And uh, that's important. Do you think then that hope has been eroded now that you say he's, you know, he uh, has left the opposition and joined hand with government, forming a quasi-dictatorship or maybe a full-out di dictatorship? So has mm. that hope been eroded? Well, it's Before being eroded. Now. But you have to look also uh, at that from a, a class perspective. They eroded, you know, with uh, intellectuals, mm. uh, the middle classes that mm. basically didn't want this to happen because even us as middle classes, we we we're feeling the you know the pinch mm. of what's going on. Uh, but mm. what about uh, the the other people who are who still hope uh, uh, that is looking into something? Uh -huh. mm. And uh, it, it might happen. Mm. But really yeah. let me ask mm. this question. Yeah. The narrative that was presented with the handshake was that they wanted to bring about stability. Does that narrative really hold water? Yeah, it, it, it doesn't. But he, he's not being attacked. He's not being interrogated. It's a political narrative. And that's why uh, uh, alternatives to... Uh, mega narratives are very, very, very important mm -hmm. because if if, if uh, uh, intellectuals or civil society <coughs> activists are talking about those issues and criticizing it, as long as they are not contesting for political power, mm. because that's the crux of the matter. Okay, it's it's not challenged. It's not it's not challenged yet. But was there a crisis, was there a situation in the country mm. that could be explained or that the handshake could help explain? As in, were we in some tumultuous times? Were we in constant friction with each other so that the handshake could be justified? Yes, uh, so it's fundamentally political. Mm. I think uh, when you go back to well, January 30th, mm. And uh, Raila is sworn in as the people's president. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? And you saw that bit yourself. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, that's what I call, you know, brilliant organizing. Because you realize that the country is angry about something. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you, 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 you basically tell the country, well, you know, we, we, we haven't captured state power. We are right. not in state house. Right. But there is uh, something called the people's president. Mm. Okay, which was actually his father. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, because Odinga was the people's president. Mm -hmm. as, as he, d he, he didn't, uh, you know, end up in state house. There are people who don't rule but reign. <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. they are there, they, but but they, they are very very powerful, mm. and uh, that's 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 you know that's Raila in some way. So uh, people's president, you know what happened? Uh, I think Huru was very 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 smart. You know, in, in terms of I think he's the one who benefited and bridging the more. gap. <laughs> mm. Yeah, because that thing was building. And um, I don't think Jubilee would have survived that year if that if it continued that way. Mm. If that movement, uh, um, Willie, um, yeah. you, you've written quite a number of things in the recent past. Um, you know, mm. on one of the articles that you you wrote, you talked about the country um, being in need of uh, rescuing. <laughs> A political awakening needs to take place. And I'm looking at that against what we've just been talking about uh, a few minutes ago, where you talk about a hope eroded by people who looked at a leader who was in the opposition to bring about some kind of change mm -hmm. or at least some kind of pricking of conscience. Now, if at the same time we need this awakening in the country, you need this political awakening. If you see that the one who could have done it before could have helped um, is now on the other side of things, how would this rescue come about? Who now would be responsible? We, we just have to to imagine, as I was saying, um, and, and I think this is this is for me uh, the main issue in 2022. Uh, whether there is going to be some leadership that captures the imagination of Kenyans that this narrative, mm. you know, by the barons, which has been there since 1963. Um, can be changed mm. where, where you can move from politics of uh, division to you know politics of of humanity and issues if uh, there is a leadership that can capture that mm. okay I, I don't think that leadership you know will win but Kenya has had waves political mm. waves when a message you know, moves from the margins to the center very, very, very quickly. It mm -hmm. happened with the NAC, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but that was a different context because of the the Maui dictatorship. Mm -hmm. So, and there had been almost a decade of uh, what was called the Second Liberation. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, where people were pushing and so forth. So I I don't know whether you know we we you know we we have that wave. Uh, but I think uh, we took six to, eight, six to eight years to fight colonialism mm -hmm. and we took almost 40 decades to fight for the constitution. Mm. So it, it looks like we have a culture of um, incremental, you know, resistance or uh, movements that are built uh, slowly, mm -hmm. you know, and they move from the margins to the center after a while. Mm -hmm. But that, uh, a lot of people don't want to hear that. Uh, the people I work with, even the young people, mm -hmm. they, they basically think that within two years. They want it now. Okay, you can do it. It's, 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 it's hard work. Mm. And um, uh, when John the Baptist talked about the, the lone <laughs> voice in the wilderness, mm. You know, when you look at Jesus Christ or even Muhammad mm. and you study, you know, the their message, you know, it didn't it didn't catch fire until they were out of the the scene. Right. Yeah. Mm. Muhammad's uh, uh, work was around Mecca. Mm. Yeah. It's after he died that uh, the message moves to Baghdad and you know, mm -hmm. every other place. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the, the young people here who are 
uh, are involved in social justice centers, who are involved in movements like decolonize, mm. you know, in Lamu, save mm. Lamu, uh, uh, in uh, uh, what is Turukana, you have people like Ikawa Ingla with with the friends of Lake Turkana. Yeah. So there are movements there, you know, uh, of, 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 of young people. The artists, it's a big one when you look at the, 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 the songs that are coming up, you know, uh, the poets, mm -hmm. uh, graffiti optics. There is a, a lot of stuff that is, is going on there, but it has to be coordinated. Uh, it has to be uh, politicized in the sense that they need to know what kind of Kenya they are, you know, they, they are critiquing. Mm. Because we are very good at critiquing, but when it comes to solutions, then when you you want to tell people uh, this is uh, the kind of future that you can have, yeah. okay, you you have also to look at uh, the c uh, contra narratives, whether they are religious, uh, whether they are cultural, because they are always they are always there. Mm -hmm. There are some people who basically, you know, believe that uh, you know. Uh, the greatest happiness is in heaven, mm -hmm. you know. So there's nothing like heaven on earth, mm. and they don't want it. <laughs> so it's 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 a tall order, and that's why it has to be uh, created with a, a, a specific message of change. Mm. Even Professor Owo, who I mentioned, and who I kind of who intrigues me. Um, it's, 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 it's where did he come from mm. and why is he so dominant mm. so even for the young people you know the leaders of or the leaders that are going to challenge the state of course they have to think about that very 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 seriously are, are kenyans ready i, I keep asking this question mm. over we will talk because you also talk about you know like uh, the fourth liberation and saying it's about that time where these winds of change have to blow in a certain direction yeah are kenyans ready to go along with that um it would seem as if they've been you know kenyans have been coddled for the longest time by this narrative that you're talking about yeah you know uh i am the leader i am the one who will show you and the yes. things that i say are the ones then that you uh, mm. you must believe it because you're following me right yeah, yeah so are kenyans ready to break away from that comfort i to think say they, that we need something new yeah i think they they are but it takes it takes as another uh, movements in other, um, you know, history records that, you know, when you look at the Kenyan uh, situation, for example, before Mau Mau happened, mm. okay, there was a lot of anger against colonialism, okay, whether it's education, whether it's uh, uh, Kenyatta being sent to UK to fight for land and uh, protect uh, female genital mutilation for example and other stuff mm. it's 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 uh, it's it's that w what i find we don't track is that trajectory of of resistance and mm. the leaders have to track that to be able to see when they can strike mm -hmm. okay mm. and 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 that is a gift that uh, it's a political gift that some people have, you know, in, 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 in this country, all right? And that's where leadership comes from, because it's a whole question of knowing um, if you study Raila or you, you study Moi and others, you realize that there was that genius mm. of cracking, as you say, the populace, so that the populace can listen, right. you know, to a different... Uh, different message. Mm. Um, it could be an act of God. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> it's unless that happens, and then it's coupled with uh, the contestation for political power, mm. because uh, political power is the key thing. It's once you get into power, you control resources, mm -hmm. you control people. You, you know, you are the engine of of. Uh, you know, uh, progress and so forth. So I, I think, uh, uh, you know, Kenyans are face a lot of a lot of uh, uh, 
a lot of narratives mm. every day. Mm. Religion is very, very, very strong. You know, you know. In this it's even used by some leaders to. Uh, yeah. It's used by some leaders to even maybe blind, quote unquote, Kenyans a little bit more. Yeah. Because if you come out as a leader and say, you know, I believe in this particular religion, I believe that uh, yeah. it, this is what is going to take us this way, then you find Kenyans adhering to that and saying, oh, okay, hold on. Uh, yeah. We believe in this too, and maybe we, we associate. This person. We associate, mm. so we listen yeah, to everything have, else they say. By and, virtue and, of that, and they have the resources. Hmm. They have the resources. What did it, Hitler teach us? Uh, you know, Hitler taught us that you've got to have a message. Mm -hmm. You repeat it mm. every day, even if it's a lie, until mm. it becomes truth. Mm. <laughs> and so you, you, you know, even those who are are, are going to challenge the status quo. Mm. Uh, they have to look at all these aspects you are mentioning. Mm. There is always an uh, interaction between religion and politics, you know. Right. Mm. And it's very strong. Mm -hmm. Once, once, once you are hit by both, okay, you know, because religion is, uh, if 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 you say what Marx said is opium of the people, mm. then we get it twenty four seven, every day. Yeah, you, you're yeah. getting yeah. a dose of. Of the Banky, uh, cocaine, mm. you know, <laughs> so forth. Yeah. And that's what has to be unraveled. Mm. And uh, when I tell civil society groups, when, 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 I, when I meet them and they say, w what are you doing about this space occupied by religious uh, leaders? Uh, isn't there a possibility of having some kind of a shrine or a church that comes with counter narratives. Mm -hmm. uh, people just people just think that that's that's a bad idea. Mm. You know. So it's not possible to have a religion that is against that thing that you're uh, getting people to believe. I mean from what you're saying. It, no, you it seems that like the religion else. that you have always goes along with your position. It can't be that there would be a religion that Kenyans would believe in for example mm -hmm. that would go against the popular narrative at that point that would be the it, question why not yeah it, yeah it 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 can it can happen because uh, uh the the bible is is can be interpreted in institutionally if you if you if you had a church mm. that interprets the bible to glorify jesus christ for example mm -hmm. yeah on a daily basis mm -hmm. what jesus did you know forcing the scribes the pharisees and in some way that the domination of by the romans mm -hmm. okay the uh the who love you know for you know you, you know the poor mobilizing the poor you know and muhammad has the same story buddha will have the same story yeah. and those are all religions right but i watch a lot of uh, services on uh, on uh, on sunday mm -hmm. a lot of them uh, they they still stuck in the Old Testament, mm. which is <laughs> it's very 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 problematic when you look at uh, people talking about Israel, mm. you know, in a context that it it, it doesn't uh, appeal to the people here. Mm. They don't touch leaderships at all. Yeah. Mm. Okay. They can they can talk about a great prophet, but it's that prophet will never be related. You to know, current leadership. To or current leadership. Mm. Right. So is Kenya stuck in the Old Testament of tribalism? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think so. <laughs> so. So so, so <laughs> even those areas where uh, activists thought that uh, there are no no-go areas. Yeah. Mm. I've met a lot of uh, activists who are great preachers, by the way. Mm. They have read the, the Bible backwards. Mm. They sing. They, you know, they can't preach. Uh, it's, 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 it's just a question of people knowing that there are major narratives that n need uh, to be uh, not really challenged, but you need to engage, to engage. Mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. I hear what you're saying, and I think mm -hmm. I, 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 get, I get the point here. Recognizing the strength of religion on the people, mm -hmm. recognizing the need for alternative narratives that need to come, and then for all these other movements, the transformative movements, the civil societies and the social justice forums, seeing how then they can link between what people believe in religiously yeah. and then bring up this new narrative. Yeah. And when you when you tell them and they, they, they just don't get it, 
what is the pushback? What what do they say? That people will not believe a new narrative or that it's too much work or I don't want to associate myself with the religion or I, I maybe they, they are so religious themselves that they feel if I start now manipulating, using religion to manipulate the people, then I'll be committing sin. Yeah, I think that probably uh, you have hit the nail on the head. Is probably uh, the, that last point because faith is um, is something that you know uh, is strong, mm. and uh, you, you might be very, very, very intelligent. But when it comes to that particular aspect of faith, you might not even want to challenge or yep. query it. Okay, mm. and the people might might you know might uh, you know see it that way uh there's there's a group uh I don't, I don't know whether you know of it uh the atheists of Kenya you yep. there's a guy yes, called uh, yes. Harrison Harrison mm. Mumia mm. and I always debate him mm -hmm. because uh, um he you, you, you know his narrative it's it's not persuasive because uh, you need to respect other faiths and then you engage them mm -hmm. and then they can listen to you. Mm. But the moment you use, and it's just like the barons, the moment you start abusing them, yeah. no, nobody, their followers don't listen don't to listen. you. Yeah. Right. So the moment you say, you know, uh, you know, there's no God, there are a lot of people who are very upset, mm. you know, very, 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 very upset because yeah. of their faith. Mm. Uh, but you can, you, you know, you can get to talk to them through Desmond Tutu, for example, mm -hmm. who, who is a great uh, theologian who basically says we are all created by God, whether we are atheists, whether we are this or the other. Okay, mm -hmm. we are God creations. And nobody owns god nobody nobody can uh, uh, can be an agent of god and so forth yeah. so there is a, a theology that the uh, the atheists can use and everybody else who thinks that they are you know they are discrimi mm. discriminated against mm. you can even use the, the constitution which which uh, allows you freedom of thought uh, conscience, religion, mm. and that means freedom of religion. It also means that the freedom not to believe in any particular religion. Yeah. But when it, when it's abstract, and when you don't take into account that there are some people who support certain positions, and you need to persuade them over a period of time, it could take twenty years. It could take more. Yeah, it, it, it could. It's, it's, mm. it's, it's, it, even the British in their religion, they, 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 they never succeeded. Mm. You know, when you're talking about yeah. behavior change intervention, it always yeah. takes time. Yes. But if I take the view that you have alluded to and that we are a religious people, so essentially it means that we subscribe to a theocracy. Yes. A theocracy is not democratic. No. <laughs> so... It, would I then say that the mindset of the people of Kenya is already predisposed to actually listening and obeying what the, their chosen leaders say without questioning it too much? Yeah, uh, I think, I, I can, you, you know, you can say that. But then when you look at, uh, you know, religion in Kenya, right? Yes. It's not homogeneous. No, it isn't. And there are always pockets of, you know, of, resisting the mainstream religion yeah. yes you know you can track it through people like uh, kagia dinia kagia the great guy from western um, Dinia Msambwa. yes mm -hmm. Elijah Masinde. yes mm. okay and there are a lot of people a lot of people in this country who go to church on sunday and uh, at night they are pouring libations to their ancestors. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not even at least at night. Okay. There are a lot of... Uh, <laughs> no, a lot, that dichotomy exists. There are a lot of people who go to church wearing, you know, stuff that they have been given by witch doctors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, that has been our culture, all right? Yes. It's And, and, and the culture is... Uh, it fights back. But really, if mm -hmm. you look at the pockets of resistance, eh, yeah, it is not to escape what they may call as an overpowering administration, 
but it's to create their own overpowering administration. Because think of any of these splinter groups. Just take your pick. Mm. The leader splints, and what do they have? They become the boss. Well, of course. And at the beginning, and at the end, and at the last word. So, essentially, they simply want to duplicate what they claim to be running away from. But with them at the helm. Yeah, with them at the helm, as opposed to somebody else. Mm. Mm. Uh, do you have an example of that? Oh, let, let, in fact, as you're mentioning, mm. like in Bazin, I was thinking of, say, something like Legio Maria, mm. ah. who have their own Pope. Mm -hmm. I come from a region of, 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 of the country where almost every other village, every other village has, has, has their brand of, 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 of some pest, Pentecostal form. Mm -hmm. Some year wear yellow, some wear red. Really lovely garments if you, if you look at them. <laughs> yep. Lovely overflowing garments. Now, the, the real centerpiece is the, the, the hats they wear. Some mm -hmm. are pointed up. It reminds you of the Klu Klux Klang. Wow. It's a summer. <laughs> but... <laughs> but they are all religions and they're splinter. And as I said, think, even if you look at the African traditional religions, there was always someone who was at the helm. And looking at the narrative of a theocracy, they were the man of God or the man of whoever, but they're the person the people listened to. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you take the view, for instance, now of our so-called established churches, mm. where you find there's a lot of, yes, they have, not, not pockets, sometimes it's just out, outright uh, uh, resistance. I remember something that was in the papers some, well, it was quite a while back, so over 10 years ago, mm. Mm. of a church that had a disagreement in the Buruburu area. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I, I find it fascinating because... They went to court, I think. They went to court, but mm. there's one group that I think provided a solution that was permanent <laughs> yes when the sunday came the church didn't exist they raised it to the ground mm. meaning they didn't burn it but they, they broke it down so it didn't exist <laughs> <laughs> yeah they they, they they are some of those struggles that are financial and monetary ah you've gotten to the heart of the matter now yeah. this is where i was going with my with my discourse i was saying yeah. that if you look at what happens within our religious organizations, mm. it mirrors very closely what happens in the political realm. Yes. So it is, it is not difficult mm. for a politician mm. to actually create a narrative based on the same narrative that they know exists in churches, mm. okay, mm -hmm. and get followers. It is not difficult. That's right. Yes. That's it's right. like they're at and home. I, I, and I agree with you that that is a message that has to go out to people who are fighting about change mm. and not underestimate you know the persons who becomes the head of Regio Maria and basically say you know they are either not educated and so forth and they are great mobilizers mm. yes, <laughs> and, yes. and, and 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 you know and they are you know they are getting uh, money mm -hmm. they are uh, powerful they the act the artists have to convince Kenyans that when they pay uh, sadaka, mm. you know they can get a bit of that sadaka as well mm -hmm. for 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 change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And 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 to do that, uh, it's uh, it, it takes a lot of work. When you look at the human rights movement, for example, which I was involved in, it's, it's it still doesn't have presence at the grassroots. Mm. Okay. Mm. And what the church is, when we talk about missionaries, where are the pastors? Grassroots. Where are the priests? Mm. They don't leave that that space. They live in the community. Yeah. Mm. So 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 even in terms of of change, uh, unless you go to those churches which you you're talking about everywhere, mm. and you just find out what's happening, you can even join them to to uh, to, to to understand. You know what what is happening instead of uh, this uh, lazy intellectualism where you just dismiss it mm. and they basically say yeah you know this uh it's, it's, it's abstract stuff yeah. you, you you you've got to go there and even uh, my notion of having another an alternative shrine mm -hmm. you know that has uh, counter narratives mm. has to be in those positions mm. in, in those places um and there is you know and there is money yeah 
It's money. <laughs> you know, uh, Okoti Bitek, who, who taught in the university when I was a young lecturer there, he asked me once, um, uh, he's a very anti-religion. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Uh, because when you read his books, he, he, he satirizes. Yeah, exactly <laughs> anti-Christianity. Yes, mm. anti-Christianity. Yes. So, yes. so he asked me, just as a young lecturer in the senior common room, have you ever seen uh, a bishop who is not fat? So, hmm? just out of the blue. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> and so, I said, yes, but... Uh, yeah, I know some who are slender mm -hmm. you know, and so forth. And then he said, uh, what about their faces? Mm. You know, are their faces as smooth as a baby's bottom? Mm. <laughs> 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 and so I asked him, what is this all why, about? Why are you, why are you heading with this? Yeah, where are you heading to? And, and, and so he, his, his, his uh, I, I, he told me, Religion is very powerful. Okay, don't underestimate. You know, uh, people. You know, you 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 you've got to uh, first of all look at their strength. Mm. Okay, why is it that they have a following? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, you 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 you, and how do you get their followers to follow you? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. <laughs> And it's not it's it's, uh, it's it's not just a question of thinking. It's also the question of uh, uh, living with the people, understanding them. It's uh, it's 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 not even the the, the, the issue of resources, mm. uh, because in the fifties, uh, when the first election took place, nineteen fifty seven. People who are elected didn't have any money. Mm. Mm. They didn't. They were if, actually doing a job. Mm. That's right. Mm. If if you look, you read this book of uh, Morton, the one he wrote on Moy, mm. how Moy was picked. The, the communities picked them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. The communities would pick you. They would we'll call you, you and right. say, you know, we have decided. We have decided you are you the one represent us. Yeah, you speak us. English. You are, this the British have given us mm. hell. Yeah. We'll and just hold that thought and you'll continue yeah. with this uh, yeah. train of thought. Mm -hmm. But we just want to take a break on KTN Home and uh, the conversation continues on Spice FM. We are live streaming on online as well. We are on KTN Home. We are on Spice FM. Our guest host today is Dr. Willie Mutunga, former Chief Justice. Keep you right here. The conversation continues. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Spice 87.9 Spice FM. Mombasa. Yeah, so communities would identify people and they say that you are the one who's going to be our leader. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and in 1957, I was in Standard 4. I remember that election very well. Mm. Uh, because even as kids who are involved in it, mm. uh, it was uh, it's, it's just like the euphoria of second liberation. Mm. The eu eu euphoria of independence for us. Uh, in Ketui, where colonial apartheid was there, I mean, where the Wazungus lived, we couldn't go there. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't we didn't go there. There was you know colonial discrimination and so forth. So you have these Africans who had gone to Makerere, or they were school teachers, and uh, in '57, you know, the election happens, and a lot of those people were just picked. Mm. And they were given money. Uh, those who didn't have trousers, uh, the trousers bought. Mm -hmm. uh, and some got cars. Mm. People forget that in 1961, when Kenyatta came out of uh, prison, and I was in standard data, I remember that very, very clearly. They, all the Kapenguria six guys had Mercedes Benz bought for them. Where? The registration numbers were KHA1, to uh, KHA one to six. So it didn't start this last week with giving vehicles. <laughs> 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 no, the, the, the point I'm making is, is is the people who gave them these gifts. Mm. So that we used to call that Kenyatta home again. Mm. This is sixty one. Mm. People contributing. 
even the airlifts even when kenyatta went to the UK, it was actually the, the UK, citizens the contributing this time yeah right. it's the one that right. uh, yeah the citizens mm. and uh, uh, Ngei, who was part of the Kapenguria sex, the campers also, you know, uh, contributed so that they could build a house for him. Mm -hmm. Gatundu house was built by people where Kenyatta was. Mm. Mm. Okay, so there was a lot of, 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 of giving, the politics of representatives. Yeah. Well, you didn't have to... Actually, it was, really, you mm? even give the Kenyatta going to the UK. It's yeah. people who contributed for him to, to send go. Him. Yes. yes, they sent him. To yeah. go and represent us. They sent us. him. Yeah. And they kept on sending the money. Mm. It's not that... that for they, upkeep. Mm. It's not that, that they stopped. Right. Okay. And, uh, you know, there is the KCA. Mm -hmm. Kiku Central Association. Association. Yes. He was he was writing the uh, the the, uh, the the minutes yes. and all oh, manner of things. Mm -hmm. And there are stories that uh, Kenyatta had great love for uh, whiskey, and uh, natives had to run around and get whiskeys from <laughs> very. <laughs> <laughs> it's eight o'clock. Let's take a look at traffic. We continue the conversation. We're having a conversation with our guest host this morning, Dr. William Mutunga, former Chief Justice.